YouTube. So recently on YouTube there has been a trend of kind of ranking things in different parts of your life of like TV shows, movies, things that have happened in your life, that kind of thing. And today I'm going to be doing my own ranking of the Doctor Who 2005 reboot. Hello editing Tori here. So when I started editing this video I have over an hour of footage talking about Doctor Who and when I started to go through the different sections that I talk about in this I realized I have so much footage that I figured I would just separate them all into separate videos so you're gonna get a couple videos of me ranking things in the Doctor Who reboot so enjoy this one didn't think this would be a little like four-part video series but I hope you guys enjoy it so this is part three which is my honorable mention section which is like pseudo companions as well as like important plot point characters if you're new here hello my name is Tori Cyclic. I make new videos every Sunday for Cyclic Sunday with other videos throughout the week. If you like what you see, like this video down below and subscribe while you're down there as well. You can also follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok in the description at TSS6295. Now, let's get into the video. Since I'm going to be talking about everything from the 2005 Doctor Who reboot, I'm going to be putting a spoiler alert on this video. If you do want to watch Doctor Who and you don't want anything spoiled for you, come back and watch this video after you've done that. So yeah, spoiler alert. So this category, how I have this written down here in my notes is pseudo companions, people that were on for multiple episode series arcs but aren't full-time companions and additional plot point characters. So my first one here is Wilfred Mott. I really love the character of Wilfred Mott. Bernard Cribbins is just an adorable little old man who plays Wilfred Mott. I just think he's so, so sweet. I really like how they establish Wilfred Mott as a character because you don't meet him initially when you first meet Donna. You meet Donna and her mom, but you don't meet her grandfather. And then when you meet her grandfather, it's a nice change because he does provide a lot of comedic relief for Donna's very dramatic episodes, but also he does provide a really great father figure kind of person to the 10th Doctor, especially in the 10th Doctor's last episodes. He becomes kind of his companion in those last few episodes and provides a really great support system for the 10th Doctor. Yeah, I just really love the comedy that he brings to very like tough, dramatic episodes and Bernard Cribbins is also just adorable. So I'm always rooting for him whenever I see him on the show. Next is Captain Jack Harkness. I really love John Barrowman and I love his character of Jack, Captain Jack Harkness. He's able to be through so many parts of the show. The fact that he was in 9's era, 10's era, and 13's era is amazing. The fact that they can bring him back and it doesn't feel weirdly out of place at all is fantastic. I was also really surprised when they brought him back for 13's era, but I thought that it worked very well because you hadn't seen him in how many years? Like <laughs> 10 years almost. And then you get a good storyline with Captain Jack coming back. It's a, a really good sign of a well-written character if you can bring him back 10 years later and it doesn't feel out of place. I really just love his storyline, how he's introduced, his characterization, how it's revealed that he's the face of Bo, that he becomes immortal because of Rose. It's just a very well-written character and very well-acted character as well. And he provides a lot of the like flirtatious stuff, especially in Nine season that you don't get from the Doctor. And then when you do see it with the Doctor, it's very different from how Captain Jack is. They're they're very like manly-ish kind of men, but they act in very different ways, especially also because Captain Jack is one of the LGBTQ characters on the show. You get to see a lot of that kind of thing on the show, which is great too, because that's a really much needed representation. The fact that it's been on the show since 2005 is pretty incredible also, especially from Captain Jack. So he's just an overall great character. Next is River Song. I really love River Song. I love Alex Kingston, the actress who plays her. I think the way that they created this character and established who she is from her first episode as being the doctor's wife but he doesn't know her when they first meet and then their that their timelines kind of go in reverse and like intertwine with each other I think it's just such a good way to bring in a very important character for the doctor and River is the perfect person for that there's so many layers to her character that allow her to be part of 10's era 11's era and 12's era so it's really kind of like Captain Jack that you get really great writing that allows for this character to be, to be a part of so much of the show. I also really love how she's presented in season six. I think the writing for her in season six is pretty amazing and her relationship with the doctor and that grows so much and it's it's just really well written and really well done. Next is John Sims incarnation of the master. So John Sims incarnation of the master was in season three of Doctor Who which was with Ten and with Martha. John Sim is so incredible in this role. He is terrifying and dramatic and just so so good he plays the the manicness of insanity so so well because there's so many different levels to it and you get all of those with him you also get to see his growth from slightly insane to completely insane in the season four christmas specials because that's when the master comes back and changes everything in the doctor's storyline and changes his entire timeline and 
provides the foil for 10 regenerating into 11. Him and David Tennant also play off of each other really, really well. I think all of their scenes together as the Doctor and the Master are really, really incredible. And then when the Master returns in season 10, it is such a good buildup and reveal. I was very, very impressed with this because when I was watching the episode where the Master comes back in season 10, I was like, that looks like the guy who played the Master, John Sim. And then as soon as it's revealed, I was like, okay, this is this is pretty pretty incredible because they had already established the Master with Missy, but then the fact that they get to bring back John Sim and have that be a completely new characterization for the Master as well as show more of the Master's character just amazing. Next on my list is Missy. So Missy is played by Michelle Gomez and she is the female incarnation of the Master. Before Missy's first appearance in season eight, you haven't seen the Master since season four. So having her brought back as a new incarnation of the Master and they explain how the Master reincarnated because the master kind of like died and went away at the end of season four and you don't really know if he's actually dead or if he's going to come back the fact that they were able to bring the master back with a brand new person a female incarnation of it as well shows one that gender really has no rules in the show but two that you can bring back this character in a brand new way and it's still really effective michelle gomez plays this character very well because you can see the psychopath part of the master but then you also get a really great redemption arc from her as well because she starts to realize the things she's done wrong as the master but then you still know that there's the insanity behind all of that too. She's she's a really great actress and I think her and Peter Capaldi worked very, very well together as the master and the doctor. It was just some, some really great stuff from her. And lastly is the master played by Sasha Dewan. I think Sasha Dewan's master reveal is the best one out of all of them. In watching this episode of season 12 where the master is revealed to have returned, I had no idea that it was the master literally until the second it was revealed that he was the master. And that's really one good writing but two really great acting because you don't see it from the character at all that he's playing in the beginning in the beginning of the episode the character of oh and then as soon as that that light switches and he becomes fully the master and you see it really come to life it's just incredible in Sasha Dewan's master there's a lot of harkenings back to John Sims master but at an even more elevated level and I think that really works as a foil for Jodie Whittaker's doctor it's just really well done it's some incredible acting out of him i think it's it's just great so that is all i have for you guys today i hope you guys enjoyed this if you watch doctor who let me know about your thoughts about it in the comments down below i'd love to get to know what you guys think about doctor who if you do watch it and if there's anything else you'd like to see here on my channel let me know about that in the comments down below as well thank you guys so much for watching dftba and i will see you guys next time bye